Hi everyone and welcome back. In our last lesson we defined the curl of a vector field which was some sort of a derivative-like object which told us about some of the physical properties that the vector field might exhibit. In particular it told us about rotations. Well today we're going to consider another type of derivative that we can get from our vector field called its divergence. Specifically if we have a vector field f with component functions p, q, and r then the divergence of our vector field, div f, is defined to be this expression here. Partial p by partial x, plus partial q by partial y, plus partial r by partial z. Notice that this is exactly the dot product of our derivative vector that we introduced in the last lesson with the vector field f. The curl, on the other hand, was the cross product of these two objects. So that's the definition. Let's try an example together. If we have a function f of x, y, z given by x, y, e to the x, and y plus z, then according to our definition up here, the divergence is going to be the partial derivative with respect to x of x, y, plus the partial derivative with respect to y of e to the x, plus the partial derivative with respect to z of y plus z. So the partial with respect to x is going to give us y, the partial with respect to y here is going to give us 0, and the partial with respect to z will give us 1. We have a divergence of y plus 1. Ah, notice here that the divergence is a scalar field, right? It's a function that takes in maybe x, y, z, but it spits out just a single real number. This is a scalar field. The curl, on the other hand, was a vector field. So this is the big difference between curl and divergence. Curl is computed with a cross product and is a vector field. Divergence is computed with a dot product and is a scalar field. At the end of the last lesson, we discussed the physical interpretation of the curl. Specifically, I told you that if you have a vector field f on R2, then we can think of that as modeling some type of a fluid flow. Maybe the vector field is telling us the velocity of water as it moves down a river or around a lake. And if we think of it this way, then the curl at x, y is telling us how much rotation would occur if we placed a small object in the water at that point. The divergence of a vector field also has an important physical interpretation, and just like for curl, we can best understand it in terms of fluid flow. So let's pretend that each of these vector fields models the velocity of a fluid as it travels throughout a region. You can see that in the first vector field, something interesting is happening at this point here and this point here. If we're thinking of this as the velocity of water throughout a lake, then at this point the water seems to be springing into existence. It appears from nothingness. Maybe there's some sort of a source here, a pump that's pumping water into the lake. The divergence at this point will be positive. At this point, on the other hand, the water is disappearing into nothingness. Maybe there's some hose sucking water out of the lake. Here, the divergence will be negative. What about this second lake? Well, unlike the first lake, water is not being introduced at any point. It's also not being taken away at any point. It appears that the water is just constantly flowing to the right. So in this case, the divergence will be zero everywhere. What about the third lake? Well, at first glance, this might look more like the second situation, but really there are points where water is being introduced and water is being removed. Take a look at the points on the left side. The rate at which water flows into these points is greater than the rate at which it flows out, which means as water flows through these points, it's somehow being destroyed, right? We have a net loss of water from our system as we move through these points. The divergence here is negative. At points on the right side, however, the opposite is true. The rate at which water flows into these points is less than the rate at which it flows out. There's more water leaving these points than entering, which means water is somehow being created at these points. The divergence is positive. So the takeaway here is that we can think of the divergence at a point x, y, z as representing the net rate of change of the mass of a fluid flowing from the point x, y, z. I'd like to end this video by drawing a clear connection between curl, divergence, and Green's theorem. Recall that from the last video, we saw that if we have a vector field f of x, y with component functions p and q, then its curl will turn out to be partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y times k vector. This is exactly the expression that appears in the double integral from Green's theorem. So perhaps we can rewrite Green's theorem in terms of the curl. 
Doing this will require us to get rid of our k vector, right? There's no k vector in Green's theorem. But getting rid of this vector is actually quite easy. All we have to do is take the dot product of both sides of this expression with k. After all, k is the vector 0, 0, 1, so k dot k is simply 1. We have that curl f dot k is equal to partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y times k dot k. This is 1, and we're left with partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y. Okay, fantastic. Let's see how we can use this to rewrite Green's theorem. According to Green's theorem, if we want to compute this line integral, the line integral in the positive direction along the curve C of f dot dr, we could instead compute the double integral over d of this expression here. But this is exactly curl of f dot k dA. So there you go, Green's theorem expressed in terms of the curl. It turns out we can derive a similar expression involving the divergence of our vector field. In order to do this though, it will be helpful to think about our motivation for considering this line integral from the start. Remember, we asked the question, how much work is done by our vector field in pushing a particle along this curve C? We said that if the particle is sitting at some point, the vector field might be applying a force, say, in this direction. Now some of that force, in particular this part of the force moving in the direction of this unit tangent vector, is going to be contributing to our particle's movement along the path. That part of the force is given by the dot product of F and T. So if we want to find the total work that's being done, we're going to integrate F dot T along this entire curve C. We're going to compute the line integral along C of F dot T ds. This is the same thing as the expression we have up here. This was our motivation. So this is what we get by integrating the component of force moving in the direction of the tangent vector. But I wonder, what would we get if we had integrated the component of force moving perpendicular to the tangent vector, the other component of force? Well, this force doesn't contribute anything to our particle's movement along the curve, so this integral is going to represent a completely different quantity. Still though, it's an interesting question. And as you'll see on the next slide, it has something to do with divergence. Okay, we want to better understand the integral of forces pointing perpendicular to our curve. That is, we want to integrate the component of our force moving in the same direction of this unit normal vector n. Okay, well just like with the tangent vector, that component is given by the dot product of f and n. Ah, so this means that we're interested in studying the line integral along the curve C of f dot n ds. This is a line integral of a scalar field. And of course, we know that if we can parametrize this curve as r of t, we can rewrite the integral as the integral from a to b of f dot n times the norm of r prime t dt. In order to progress further, we're going to need to say a little bit more about this normal vector n of t. If you'll recall, the tangent vector here is given by the derivative of our parametrization, x prime t, y prime t, and of course we want to unitize it, so we have to divide by the norm of r prime t, and the normal vector is supposed to point perpendicular to that. So we can use the vector y prime t minus x prime t divided by the norm of r prime t. You can check that this is a unit vector, and it is indeed perpendicular to the tangent line. Okay, let's replace n of t with this expression here. We have to take the dot product of f and n. f is given by pq, and n is given by this gross expression here. So we have the integral from a to b of p times y prime t minus q times x prime t, all divided by the norm of r prime t, and finally we multiply by this norm of r prime t dt. You can see we're going to get some cancellation here. We cancel the norms, and we can actually rewrite this y prime t dt simply as dy. And likewise, we can write this x prime t dt simply as dx. This gives us the integral along c of p dy minus q dx. And ah, now this is starting to look a lot like Green's theorem. Green's theorem usually has the integral of p dx plus q dy. We have an extra minus here, 
the dx and dy are in the wrong spots, so I'm gonna rewrite this one more time as the integral along c of minus q dx plus p dy. Okay, now it's starting to look pretty close. According to Green's theorem, I'm gonna get the double integral over d. I'm supposed to take the derivative of this thing with respect to x, right? So here I'm actually gonna have partial p by partial x, and then I'm supposed to subtract the partial derivative of this guy with respect to y. So that's actually gonna give me plus partial q by partial y dA. And now a small miracle has occurred. Do you recognize this expression in our integral? It's not the curl anymore, it's the divergence. So if we integrate the forces pointing perpendicular to the curve, Green's theorem allows us to write this as a double integral over the interior of the divergence of our vector field. This is the double integral over d of div f dA. Now, I know this was a lengthy derivation, so if you didn't understand every single detail, that's okay. The important thing to take away here is that there's a deep connection between curl, divergence, and Green's theorem. We're not going to be using these results super directly, but we will be discussing them next week when we talk about surface integrals.